I wanna share with you guys how I made this super simple beginner friendly face wash. It does look like I made more than one face wash, but what I did was divide it up into different bottles and made them different colors and they look so freaking pretty. I'm obsessed with how the colors turned out. Also, I will be sure to link in the description box to all the ingredients and equipment that I used for this video. Also, go check out my Amazon storefront. I link to everything I use for formulating over on Amazon, but I actually created a list just for this DIY so you can buy all the ingredients and equipment you need just to make this. It'll make it so much easier to shop for those, so check that out. I'll have my Amazon storefront linked in the description box. If you're new here, hey, my name is Tara. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell if you enjoy it here. And go check out all my other videos because I have so many unique recipes that I've shared on my channel over the years. You'll, you'll find something you'll love. I'll be making a 300 gram batch. And if you don't know how to work with batch sizes, I will link down below to my video that explains how to make larger or smaller batches. But I'm starting with phase A and I'm using 4.5 grams of Xanthan Gum Soft. This Xanthan Gum here, Anthony's Premium Xanthan Gum, is not the Xanthan Gum I used, but it is the one I linked to on Amazon. If you use the one on Amazon, your face wash won't be as clear. So if you want yours to look like mine, make sure you buy the Xanthan Gum I have linked in my description box instead of the one that I have linked on my Amazon storefront. The face wash will still work out if you wanna use the one on Amazon though. Now I'm gonna add in 30 grams of glycerin. We're mixing this with the xanthan gum because it prevents clumping. Xanthan gum clumps when you add it to water. So you wanna mix it in glycerin first before adding it into the water. That's the reason we're adding these two ingredients together first. Glycerin is also humectant that will help hydrate the skin. It doesn't really matter where you buy your glycerin. Everywhere I've ever bought glycerin, they've all always performed the same. So if you buy it on Amazon, it's totally fine. And this is what the slurry looks like. That's what it's called when you mix the two ingredients together. It's called creating a slurry. So make sure it's all good and mixed before you add in your distilled water. And if you want, you could totally use a hydrosol here instead, but I'm just gonna use 216 grams of distilled water. And then you wanna mix that all together until it's nice and thick. And here's what the viscosity will look like around this time. You can totally adjust the percentage of xanthan gum. If you want it thinner, use less xanthan gum. If you want it thicker, use more xanthan gum. Moving on to phase B, this is going to include our surfactants. These are the ingredients that foam and lather and cleanse our skin. I'm using 30 grams of decoglucoside. Decoglucoside is an extremely gentle and mild surfactant. It's actually been growing a lot in popularity with the more natural, like non-toxic skincare movement that's been trending. It is non-ionic and non-ionic surfactants are some of the most gentle surfactants. But typically non-ionic surfactants are paired with an anionic surfactants as it helps boost lather. But for this face wash, I'm gonna be using an amphoteric surfactant, cocomidopropyl betaine. This is also a really gentle, mild surfactant, popular in natural skincare products and organic products. And typically it's really good at assisting anionic surfactants and creating lather, but this is a face wash. We really don't need any big bubble lathering going on. So I'm using a non-ionic and an amphoteric surfactant to keep this face wash really gentle and mild on the skin. Although if you wanna use a anionic surfactant here, or a combination of other surfactants you would like, that is totally fine. These are just the two that I'm picking for this DIY. There's so many you could use. And I actually do have a video all about surfactants. I'll link down below if you guys wanna watch that. And a video that goes in even more detail on how to make face washes, a part one and a part two. So I'll link those down below as well. But anyways, all you wanna do is pour your phase B, the surfactants, in with your phase A. And you want to do this gently. You don't want to try to make like a bunch of bubbles and make the surfactants lather up and stuff. So just gently mix it all together. And now I'm going to go ahead and move on to phase C. And this is just our preservative. I'm using Optifin Plus, 4.5 grams of it. I'm going to be honest, this really isn't a preservative I like to use, but I know a lot of you guys use it and it's easily like available online. So that's why I'm using it. But just to let you know, I'm not a big fan of it and I don't really recommend it. I recommend using Liquid Dermal Plus. I use that in most of my videos. Now let's talk about some other beginner friendly ingredients you could add in. So things like chamomile extract, 
cucumber extract, green tea extract, licorice root extract, ginger extract, strawberry extract. There's also like oat, aloe, calendula. Um, there's also extracts that are oil soluble. This pineapple and watermelon and strawberry one is. This caffeine extract is water soluble. There's marshmallow extract that helps soften and condition the skin. This watermelon one is glycerin based, which means it's water soluble. So when shopping for your extracts, you just wanna make sure you're getting water soluble ones. So they need to be like glycerin based or water based. You don't want the oil based ones. You can use those just not in a face wash that's water based. You can also add in willow bark extract or witch hazel extract for a face wash for like oily acne prone skin. You could add wheat hydrosol, rice hydrosol, baobab hydrosol, quaternized rice, or honey quats. All of these will add conditioning benefits to your face wash and will help like soften and condition your skin. You just wanna make sure that these are water soluble that you're adding in and you can just add these in at phase C with the preservative at like 2%, you'll have to look at their suggested usage rates, but they're very easy. You just mix them in, very beginner friendly. All right, let's move on to adjusting the pH. I'm gonna use this 100 milliliter glass beaker and fill it up with some distilled water and place my pH meter in. And then I'm gonna grab a 25 milliliter glass beaker. It's a very small beaker and just pour a little bit of my face wash in it. So the pH meter I'm using is really, really expensive. So you don't need this exact one, even though I'll link to it down below. You could use pH strips or a cheaper pH meter, um, but the pH of this face wash is way too high. It's 9.5. So you wanna make sure you lower the pH. If not, the face wash can dry out the skin. So in this bottle, I have 50 grams of citric acid and 50 grams of distilled water. So that's a 50-50% solution of citric acid and distilled water that's uh, been mixed together and I use that to lower the pH. I started with adding only five drops of that citric acid solution and then I mixed it in and I let it sit for a minute to let the pH adjust before taking the pH again. And even though this part seems annoying and tedious, it is really important in order to get a really good product that's going to be great for your skin and not dry out your skin. So again, after a minute passes, I'm gonna take another 25 milliliter beaker or you can just clean out the same one and add a little bit of face wash in there again. Grab your pH meter, wipe it off, place it in, and take the pH again. And the pH is 7.12, which means, again, it's still too high. We want a pH around our skin's natural pH level, which is between 4.5 and 5.5. So again, I'm gonna add a few more drops. I ended up using a total of 15 drops of my 50% citric acid solution. And again, I'm just mixing it in and letting it sit for a minute before taking the pH again. So I'm taking my pH meter out of the little beaker from before, wiping it off, rinsing it off in the distilled water again, and then pouring my face wash in another 25 milliliter beaker again to take the pH again. I know this process seems tedious, but I promise it's so worth it. And now I have the pH down to 4.8-ish, which is perfect. You want anywhere between 4.5 and 5.5. That's our skin's natural pH level and it won't dry out our skin if we have a good skin-friendly pH level. So now you just wanna cover it and let it sit overnight to let all the bubbles and like foam chill out overnight. All right, so the next day I'm going to grab a scale. Obviously you don't have to do this part. This part is just for the video, but I am going to be dividing up the face wash into a bunch of 100 milliliter beakers and coloring them all different colors. In the past, you've probably seen me use mica powder on my channel, which if you wanna use that, you totally can. Just mix it in with the xanthan gum and glycerin in phase A. But I'm actually gonna be using these water soluble colorings. I don't remember what the name of the website is, but I'll be sure to link it down below. And I also link to some skin safe water soluble dyes on Amazon on my Amazon storefront, where you can find the whole list with all of the ingredients for this DIY but I am obsessed with these water soluble dyes. You're gonna be seeing me use these a lot in the future, so you might as well go pick some up if you are a regular viewer and like to uh, follow a lot of my recipes. Like, look how gorgeous the colors are. You can't say you're not obsessed. This is no color correction at all. They look this beautiful without even editing them. But yeah, so I am just going to go ahead and fill up all of my bottles. I'm using these one ounce glass bottles, which were really difficult to fill up. And I didn't want to use a funnel because I would have had to use a different funnel for every single bottle and I don't have that many tiny funnels. Also, I made these clear labels 
which if you guys want to see how I make these, because I just started making these, let me know and I'll make a video on how I make them. But um, I actually need to make an entire updated video on how I make labels anyways. So let me know if you want to see that. But anyways, I'm going to let these face washes sit overnight again because they did kind of get some foam and lather from coloring them. But here they are the day after and look how crisp and clear and beautiful they are. I am so obsessed with how these turned out. I really hope you guys like the recipe. I do have a little advice for you guys that I learned, well, I should have already known, but I learned again from a learning experience. So I, I bottled all these up and put these pumps on and look at what this pump does. It like emulsifies the face wash when I pump it through this pump. And I've had this issue in the past with this pump. I should have known. So instead, don't use these bottles I did. Use this bottle with like a squeezy cap. So just want to show you guys, I did have a little bit of leftover clear and I put some in this bottle and look, it's nice and clear and gelled and it doesn't have that like milky emulsifiedness that the blue one did when I pumped it out. So I will link down below to bottles that I recommend because look at that gorgeous clear gel. That is what you want. You don't want something like milky like that. Like it's fine. You can use it on your skin and the face wash will perform exactly the same way but it doesn't, it doesn't look well, nice. Like this is what the blue one's supposed to look like when you get it out of the bottle. So yeah, just wanted to mention that to you guys. Keep that in mind. This is why you should always test out your packaging with any product you make. But you know, my head's always everywhere and I can't ever remember everything. <laughs> I was also filming five other videos while I was filming this video, but this bottle would also be a good alternative. I'll link to these bottles down below. I'll also link to all of them on the Amazon storefront. This pump bottle is great because it has a big opening. You just want to make sure the opening is like big enough or just do a little tester before you fill up all 20,000 bottles like I did. I hope you guys enjoyed the formula. Let me know if you guys decide to make it yourself. Look at the gorgeous lather. It does have a good bit of lather to it and it helps remove makeup and it removed my waterproof eyeliner as well. So we love that. Let me know how you guys enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up. Follow me on Instagram at Terry Skincare. I'm constantly posting over there. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Later. I'm